anytime someone is using a technology device, whether that's a laptop, a camera, a mobile phone, a virtual reality headset, no matter what it is, when they're using that device, they are having an experience. And we call the person a user, and so we talk about the user experience. And no matter what the user is doing with that device, whether they are paying an insurance bill, whether they're streaming a movie, whatever they're doing, they want to have a great experience. And if you are the designer of the product, then you want them to have a great user experience. But what does it mean to have a great user experience and how do you go about designing it? Well, what we know is that great user experiences don't happen by themselves. You have to purposely design a great user experience. In this short course on user experience fundamentals, we're going to go through what it takes to design a great experience. Here's some of the things we're going to cover. We're going to talk about some of the principles of user experience design and therefore the definition of what makes a great user experience. We're going to talk about what UX work actually means. Who is it that does it? What are the kinds of things that UX professionals do? We're going to talk about the different roles and jobs in the field of user experience. We'll talk about some of the different user experience processes that are out there. And we'll talk about some of the obstacles to success. Why is it that not all products have a great user experience? What is it that gets in the way of doing great user experience work? We're going to cover all this and more in this course on UX fundamentals. If you're going to design a great user experience, then there's some principles of user experience design that you need to follow. And let's talk about what some of those are. So the first one I want to talk about is that you need to know who your target audience is. You need to design for that target audience and for what we call context of use. Well, what does that mean? Let's take an example. Let's say that you're designing the uh, set up controls for using a camera. Well, is your target audience someone who takes pictures of their family and friends maybe uh, uh, once or twice a week? Or is your target audience professional photographers who are in the studio all day, every day using the camera? The target audience is going to affect the design decisions that you make. So the more you know about who are the users of this product, what the different target audiences might be, and also the context of use. Where are they using this? How are they using this? Are we designing an app that's meant to be used by multiple people at the same time? Are we designing uh, software that's meant to be used when someone's at their desk? Are we designing an app that's going to be used while people are walking around on the street? All of these things are part of the context and they also affect design. So it's really important to take into account who's the target audience and what is the context of use and make sure that we know that and that when we're designing for the user experience, we're taking all of that into account. So that's the first principle, designing for the target audience and the context of use. The next principle is designing for ease of use and ease of learning. And you might say, well, of course, you know, I'm not going to design a product that's hard to use. And I would say most people don't set out to design a product that's hard to use. But if you want to make sure that it is easy to use, you have to keep that in mind. And that has to become very important in the design process. You've got to always be having your eye on the target of making sure this is easy to use and also easy to learn, which is not necessarily the same thing. And so as you're designing, you want to be asking, what would this person expect to do next? What do they want to do next? How can we make sure in the design of this particular screen or page, how can we make sure that we are making it as easy to use as possible? And it also means that you're going to have to test the product because what you think is easy to use might not be the same as what your target audience thinks is easy to use. So it's about designing with that in mind, but then also testing for that as well. 
The next principle has to do with making sure that the experience is satisfying and enjoyable, that it's engaging. And this is different than just making it easy to use and learn. So we want to design products not only that are easy, but also that people want to use. They want to come back and use it again and again. And in order to do that, you have to know a little bit about what we call behavioral science and the psychology of design. What is it that will motivate a person to use this the first time? What is it that will motivate them to come back and use it again? What is important to this particular target audience that will make this an engaging experience? The next principle is that you've got to take the goals of the organization into account when you are designing. So it's not enough to just design a product that the users want to use because probably someone is sponsoring this product. There's a reason this product exists. There's an, a company, an organization that is trying to do something that has a purpose besides just providing a great user experience. And you as the designer need to know what that purpose is. And you need to try and not only make it a great experience for the user, but also make it meet the organization's goals. And that is not always an easy thing to do. You know, sometimes you're designing a product that where the goals of the organization fit fairly well with the goals of the user. Let me give you an example. Let's say that you're designing an app for a new ride sharing service. So, you know, it's like Uber, like Lyft, but you have your own take on it. And so you're designing this product and you want to design it so that it's easy to use and easy to learn, that it's easy for people to get their uh, car service ordered, um, and get picked up and it all goes smoothly. And the company that uh, you work for or that has hired you to design this, they want also the user to have a great experience. I mean, they want people to use the ride sharing service. They want people to use the app. They want it to be as easy as possible to call a car. They want it to be a satisfying experience. So you'd say, well, of course, if I just design a great user experience, then I will also be meeting the goals of the organization. But what if the organization says, well, not only do we want it to be easy to use and learn, but it's really important that we be able to do things like have surcharges when um, things are very busy. And we would like people to upgrade to a better car or better car service. Uh, so we want to offer that as an option and we want to encourage them to upgrade. Well, okay, now those goals, they actually might make the user experience not quite as smooth. And so now you have a potential conflict between designing what the user wants and needs, but building in what the organization or the sponsor of the product wants. So your job as a user experience professional is to do both of those things even though that might be a little tricky, that's part of the role that a user experience professional plays. And the last principle that I want to talk about is the idea that no matter what, the needs of the human, of the user, stays on top. Now you might say, wait a minute, you just said in the last principle that we have to blend in the goals of the organization and we may need to make some changes in the user experience to make sure that the organization is able to meet their goals as well. And now you're telling me, but the, the needs of the user always should come on top. Uh, aren't those two contradictory? And the answer is yes, they could be. And so that's why I'm bringing it up. But it's not just the goals of the organization that might conflict. It's also other things. Um, you know, the, there's, there might be technology constraints, you know, the technology will let us do this or it won't let us do this. And so the technology might, um, uh, get involved and might, might cause you to have to do things with the user experience that are less than ideal, or it might be 
that the time there's time and budget of the project is limited and so you can't do all the things you would like to do in designing the user experience there are constantly pressures from other places that ha can have a negative impact on what the experience is like for the human and it's the user experience professional's role to always be the voice of the user so although you may end up having to make decisions that are somewhat compromising for the human in order to take the organization's goal into uh, uh, effect in order to meet certain time and budget considerations i'm not saying you can't be realistic but you if you're the user experience professional whoever is the ux professional is the voice of the user and that always has to stay on top otherwise what's going to happen if there's no one who's always watching out for this last principle, it makes it really easy for the user experience to start to degrade. And in fact, you know, if you have ever used a product that had a very poor user experience, my guess is that this last principle got lost somewhere along the way, that there wasn't a person who was that constant champion. So these are the five principles then, what you need to do in order to make sure that you have a great user experience.